Good morning, Year 6, and welcome to Monday's Maths lesson. I will be teaching you the lessons this week, and we will be continuing with our focus on fractions. Make sure you've got your pencil or pen and paper at the ready, because you will need that to complete the chilli challenges for today. OK, then, let's get started. So I'm going to start off the lesson with my TT Rockstar shout outs. Now the focus today is speed. So I'm going to reveal the five speediest players um, of the week so far. Okay, so let's start at the bottom first. So in fifth place, we've got Erin in 6G with a speed of 0 0.87 seconds. In fourth place, we've got Peter also from 6G the speed of 0 0.99 seconds. Then we've got Logan in third place from 6M, the speed of 0 0.96. Then Kyra in 6M, she's come in second place with a, a speed of 0 0.6. And then in first place is Amelia from 6R with a speed again of 0 0.6. So well done to those children. I will be awarding all of you three dojos for aspiration. Usually in school, we would start the lesson with an arithmetic starter. So I've just got two questions for you to answer today. Question number one is to round 12,341 to the nearest thousand. And question number two is six subtract 13. Can you pause the video now and have a go at answering these questions. Welcome back Year 6. Now usually we go through the answers as well don't we? So let's focus on the first question first. So round 12,341 to the nearest thousand. If we are rounding to the nearest thousand we need to look at the thousand digit which is here the two because we've got our ones, tens, hundreds and then thousands. Then we look to the digit next door, the digit to the right of the thousands digit. Now that is a three. Do you remember the rule for rounding? Yes, so if the digit is five or more, then we round up to the next thousand. And um, if it's four or less, then we round down. So because this digit is a three, we round down. So the answer is 12,000. Okay, now for the next question, six subtract 13. So the first thing I like to do, um, when I know my answer is going to be a negative one, is to partition the number, the greater number that we're subtracting from the smaller number into separate parts because I like to get, I like to subtract to zero first using a number line which makes it easier for me and then subtract from B. So what do I need to subtract from six to get me to zero? Well that is six which is why I've partitioned 13 into six and seven because seven plus six equals 13. So the first thing I'm going to do then is starting with six, subtract six, which gives me zero. And then it's very easy then, isn't it, to subtract seven, zero, subtract seven is negative seven or minus seven. So your answer is negative seven. Okay, right then. Now we're going to move on to today's learning objective, which is to divide fractions by an integer. Now you might be thinking, what is an integer? It sounds like a very complicated word. Well, it's quite simple really. An integer is a number, a number with no fractional part. So it's basically any number that is not a decimal number, any whole number. 
So that includes zero and all of our positive numbers. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can go on and on and on. And your negative counting numbers as well. OK, so that's what an integer is. It's just any whole number, either positive or negative. OK, so I'm going to show you how to answer this first example question. We're going to start off with lots of pictures and lots of diagrams to help explain these types of questions. So let's read what this one says. Dexter has two fifths of a chocolate bar. He shares it with his friend. What fraction of the chocolate bar do they each get? OK, so I've got a bar model here. I can see there are five parts to my bar model and two are shaded in because Dexter has two fifths. Now he shares it with his friend. So he shares it with one other person. So if we're sharing two fifths, they're going to, well, Dexter's going to have this part, isn't he? And his friend is going to have this part. Do both Dexter and his friend have equal shares of the two fifths of the fraction bar of the, of the fraction bar of the top of the chocolate bar? Yes, they've both got the exact same amount, haven't they? Which is important when we're dividing. Um, we need to make sure that both get an equal amount. So what fraction does Dexter have? Well, he has one fifth because he's got one part out of five parts altogether and the friend also has one fifth okay okay so i'm writing my explanation as a sentence there as well okay should we have a go together now then at some other questions similar to that one now this first one says three quarters divided by three. OK, yeah, so if we had three separate people who wanted to share three quarters of a pizza out between them, they would get one of these each, wouldn't they? And this is one quarter because it's one part out of four altogether. This is one quarter and this is also one quarter. So three quarters divided by three, well, they would each get one quarter. OK, right, let's have a go at another one. Oh, so take a look at this picture then. Four sevenths divided by four. So here you've got four sevenths of, say, a chocolate bar, because we've got four parts shaded in out of seven altogether. If we divided these parts here between four people, how much or what fraction of this amount would each person get? So they would get one seventh each. Yeah, so one person would get one seventh. The next would get one seventh. The next person would get one seventh. And that final person would get one seventh. So our answer is one seventh. OK. And ooh, this is the same picture, isn't it? This one. Four sevenths divided this time by two. OK, so we've got four sevenths, but this time we're dividing by two. The first person would get two sevenths. And then your next person would also get two sevenths. So the answer is two sevenths. OK, let's have another go then with some pictures. What about this one then? What is a half divided by two? This is a little trickier, isn't it? 
what is a half divided by two? Now I know that what I can do, I've seen this picture quite a few times, is in order to halve a half, I could split this fraction in half again, couldn't I? Now how many parts do I have all together in my picture? Yeah, so my denominator is four because now there are four parts in my whole. Now, I only want to focus on one half of the half. So that would be one quarter. Okay, now it's our turn. So have a little think, what is a third divided by two? What did I just do in my, in my turn? that you might be able to do here. So let's split my third in half. Now, of course, I'd have to do the same to the other parts of my whole as well. Okay, so what is my new denominator then? How many parts do I have all together? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six parts all together. So that's my new denominator. And what is half of my third then? So that was my, the green was my third, but half of my third is this part here, isn't it? Which is one sixth. Was that the answer you got? Right, now you might have noticed that we need to use multiplication when dividing fractions. Now I'm going to show you a video and I do warn you that it is probably going to be stuck in your head for the rest of the day. Dash, flip, separate, divided fractions, flow vocabulary. Let's go. Keep change, flip. Yeah, that's the action. Everybody's gonna know how we're dividing fractions. Keep change, flip. Yeah, that's the action. Everybody's gonna know how we're dividing fractions. Keep change, flip. Yeah, that's the action. Everybody's gonna know how we're dividing fractions. Keep change, flip. Yeah, that's the action. Everybody's gonna know how we're dividing fractions. Dividing fractions is easy. That's no lie. You just flip one, yep. Then you multiply. Don't flip both because that'll be strange. You need to keep one exactly the same. Yeah. Then the sign gets changed, division to multiplication, that's okay. Then flip the second fraction like you're on a grill. We multiply what's left, that's when you grill. Take three fifths, divided by two thirds. Keep change flip, that's the word. Oh. Uh. Keep three fifths the same, change the sign so we multiply, that's the game. Flip two thirds, we get three over two. Then we can multiply, and so should you. Three times three is nine, two times five is ten. Nine tenths can't reduce it, that's the end. Why do we flip it? I'll explain the math. Dividing by two is the same as multiplying by half. Twenty students in your class divided by two would be ten students. All we can do, twenty students in your class times half is ten. You'll see, you'll get the same thing at the end. Dividing is multiplying by the reciprocal. Keep change flip, yeah, that's the simple rule. Keep change flip, yeah, that's the action. Everybody's gonna know how we're dividing fractions. Keep change flip, yeah, that's the action. Everybody's gonna know how we're dividing fractions. So, what method do we use then when dividing fractions by integers? We use the keep change flip method. So let me show you an example of how we would do this in your, well, when you're answering your chili questions. So here are your steps to success. You keep the first fraction, you change the operation to multiply, and you flip the second fraction. So we, for example, if we're working out this question then, one half divided by two. We keep the first fraction, so one half stays the same. 
we change the symbol to multiplication and then we flip the second fraction. Now, this is where it's a little bit different when we're dividing by an integer because two isn't a fraction, is it? Two is an integer, which is a whole number. Now to turn it into a fraction, what we do is put our fraction line in and a one underneath it because we know that this, that a fraction expressed like this can mean the same as two divided by one. Now, what is the answer to this then? Two divided by one? It is two. Okay, so that's the same. This two as a numerator and one as a denominator is basically the same as just writing two. Okay, it's a way of expressing your integer as a fraction. So, once we've put the one as your denominator, you flip that fraction. So it becomes one half multiplied by one half. Then all you have to do is the actual multiplication. So you multiply the numerators. One multiplied by one is one. And then two multiplied by two equals four. Okay, and there's your answer, one quarter. So let's have a go together now then, using keep change flip. So pause the video and have a go at this first question yourself. Feel free to go back to the steps to, steps to success in the last question to, have, um, to help remind you. Okay, so we keep the first fraction as it is. So one third. We change the division symbol to a multiplication. We need to turn the, into the, yeah, the integer into a fraction by putting a one as a denominator. Then we can flip the fraction. So this becomes one half. Then you multiply. So one multiplied by one equals one. 3 multiplied by 2 equals 6. Well done if you got that right. Let's have a go at another one then. Can you try this one independently? Pause the video and have a go. OK, welcome back. Let's just check. So we keep the first fraction, which is a half. Change the operation, so it's not division, it's multiply. We need to turn the integer into a fraction by making one the denominator because five divided by one equals five. So we've done keep, change, now we flip, which gives us one fifth, and then we multiply, one times one is one, two multiplied by five equals 10. Well done if you got that one correct. Okay, a bit of a reasoning question for you here then. Is this true or false? 3 eighths divided by 2 equals 3 quarters. You've got a picture there to help you. Pause the video and have a go. So, welcome back. Well done if you said false. Okay, 3 eighths divided by 2 is 3 sixteenths. Did you spot where this person went wrong? They've kept the numerator the same, haven't they? They've simply divided the denominator by 2 to give them 4. They haven't used keep the keep change flip method and they haven't looked at the picture to help them. Okay, so here are your chili questions for today. This is chili one which uses um, pictures and diagrams to support you with the questions. So pause the video now, chili ones. This is for you. Then chili two, you've got some fluency to start with. So you've got a range of questions here. We will need to use the keep change flip method.
make this a little bit bigger for you. And you also, Chili too, have a reasoning question. So Mo works out 10 25th divided by 5, and he says the answer is 2 fifths. You need to spot Mo's mistake, and you need to draw a diagram to show why he is wrong. Then Chili 3. And also Chili 3, you have a reasoning question to complete too. Okay, I'll just zoom in as well so you can see properly. Okay. Great, so good luck. Any questions, email us into the Year 6 at French email address. Now, if you would like some extra practice, I have assigned you a quiz, a math shed quiz on spelling shed for you to have a little go at. But this isn't, by all means, this isn't necessary. You don't have to do it. But if you would like some extra practice, I have set that for you to do as well. So here are the answers to the chilies. Here are your answers to chili one. Chili two. The chili two reasoning. Chili three. And the chili three reasoning question.